unfamiliar foe has beat the Giants in this series. First, a Cuban import in his Major League debut. Then a rookie in his fourth career start. Today, there's a familiar face, but it doesn't get any easier. Ian Kennedy has great career numbers against the Giants, and he gets the ball in game three, and it's coming up next. Day baseball here at at t Park as we get ready for Giants baseball. Final game of this three-game series, Padres and Giants. Hi again, everybody. I'm Dwayne Kuyper. Alongside me is Mike Kruko. Well, it hasn't gone the way the Giants thought it would go in the first two games. They're 0-2. Now they need a win to keep from getting swept. Now, Tim Lincecum, he's pitched pretty well, and he'll be on the mound today. Well, I mean, the good news is that Lincecum's pitching. Why is that good news? Well, the bad news is that Ian Kennedy's pitching. Yeah. He's seven and three lifetime against the Giants. However, back to the good news: Lincecum fourteen and six lifetime against these Padres. These are his feel-good team, and they need him to be good today. And let's hope he can do it. Buster Posey's at first. Hector Sanchez catching Tim Lincecum. All right, let's check in with Renell Brooks Moon for the All-Star Teacher Ceremony. Giants fans, Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area is about to give away $20,000. Please direct your attention to home plate as Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area Vice President of Marketing, Tom Pellick, will announce the winner of the 2014 Comcast Sportsnet All-Star Teacher Award and present a check for $20,000 along with Giants pitcher, Jeremy Affel. Tom? Thank you, Rennell. On behalf of uh, Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area, I'm proud to announce the 2014 All-Star Teacher. This year's winning teacher will receive $20,000 for his or her school. The remaining finalists will each receive $2,000 for their schools. The five teacher finalists have demonstrated an unrelenting dedication and commitment to their students, schools, and communities. And they're all winners in our book. The finalist for the 2014 Comcast Sportsnet All-Star Teacher Award are Alyssa Nielsen, English and Journalism at Half Moon Bay High School in Half Moon Bay. Nicole Elwood, Special Education Teacher at Twin Hill Charter Middle School in Sebastopol. Lisa Stone, representing Je Jessica Lalura, U.S. English and History teacher at Bullis Charter School in Los Altos. Rick Charvet, all subject teacher at Mount Madonna Continuation High School in Gilroy. And Sarah Coyle, English Language Arts and Social Studies teacher at Roosevelt School in Redwood City. Our congratulations to all five finalists for your great commitment to your schools and your students. And now the winner of the 2014 Comcast Sportsnet All-Star Teacher Award and the recipient of $20,000 for their school. Congratulations, Nicole Elwood from Twin Hills Charter Middle School in Sebastopol. Congratulations, Nicole. You're the big winner. We'll take you to our Comcast Sportsnet studios for an update, and we'll do that right after this.
by the Padres. Tim Lincecum gets the ball, and San Francisco needs him to be a stopper today, not just to save off the Padres, but to end a five-game losing streak here at home. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Amy Gutierrez, and obviously the Giants needing to play better baseball, but they were certainly encouraged last night by a perfectly executed relay play. It's our Togo's big play this afternoon. Sixth inning yesterday, Yasmani Grandal, the Padres hit a ball off the left center wall, and Gregor Blanco played it perfectly, throwing a strike to cut off man Brandon Crawford, who then showed off his own cannon, making a perfect throw to Buster Posey, who tags Seth Smith out at the plate. I talked to Ron Wotos about it. He said they work on it all spring training. There's so much more involved than folks realize regarding routes and your body position before a perfect couple of throws have to occur. But he did say that the biggest part of a perfect relay play is your mindset, that you have to know you can throw this guy out. All right, Krook and Kipe are going to be back with lineups and first pitch after the messages game three final game about to start shortly stay with us Sportsnet Bay Area is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Head to Jack in the Box for the new Jalapeno Ranch or Barbecue Ultimate Cheeseburgers at participating restaurants and by Toyota, number one in MPG, durability and resale value. Toyota, let's go places. Back here at at and Park, Giants baseball, game three. Our game time weather is presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is now open daily. 65 degrees here at the yard. Light winds, humidity at 79%, scattered clouds. Here's the Padres lineup Venable, Cabrera, and Smith. Good numbers for Smith against Lincecum. Quentin Headley. Headley also has good numbers against Lincecum. Medica, Amarista, Rivera, and Kennedy. On the hill today for the Giants will be Tim Linscombe, the 30 year old right hander, 5'11, 170 pounder, in his seventh year, starting his eighth year at the big league level. 15 starts this year. He's 5'5 five five with a 4'90 ERA. Almost a strikeout in inning, a 2 to 1 strikeout walk ratio. All good numbers against the Padres' lifetime, 14 and 6. 
with the 247. Those are remarkable numbers. And how does he do it with a fastball that's low 90s? A very, very unusual, unorthodox delivery. A right over the top delivery with a, a straight break, 12 6 break on a curveball, a slider, and a split. Three good downward biting special pitches. Let's take a look at the defense playing behind Lincecum today. Starting the Giants outfield from left to right, it'll be Morris, Blanco, and Pence, the best arm in right field. Crawford and Sandoval on the left side. Panic and Posey on the right side. And Hector Sanchez is going to be in the squad putting down the signs. And the pitch to Venable is high. Look at that. That's a homegrown infield. Sandoval, Crawford, Panic, Posey, Sanchez. Absolutely it is. Throw in the pitcher. Going in a foul back. One ball and one strike. Venable hitting 201. Can't quite say that for the outfield. No. No, Michael Morse. Regular Blanco, Hunter Pence, all from different organizations. And a fastball high, two balls and a strike. Venable 12 for 51 against Lincecum. And he takes wide and it's three and one. He's one for eight in the series. Three and two. Just to get it in challenge fastball. He doesn't want to walk him. Doing the honors behind the dish is Adam Hamari. Then it's Eddings, Hudson, and Onora first to third. And you're going to see a pretty big strike zone with Adam Hamari. It's a it's a big zone. You'll see belt highs, you'll see knee highs, and you'll see width on both sides of the plate. And that's fouled out of play. With Hamari, you'll see more outside calls to left-handers than you will to righties. But still, it's a good zone to throw to. You would say, is he a pitcher's umpire or a hitter's umpire? You'd say he favors the pitcher. Grandpa made a nice catch and he's letting everybody know about it. Oh, he should. That's what grandpas do. Bottom. And that's how this game gets started with a nasty split. And he threw it in a 3 2 count. Let's take a look at our Nissan keys to the game. And as always, Tim Linscombe in that first inning, that has been the problematic inning throughout his career. We'll watch him closely as to how he gets through it and what type of rhythm he brings into the game. And number two, the leadoff hitter. Last night, the Giants just had a problem getting the leadoff hitter out. Padres had the very first six leadoff hitters get on base last night. They'll try and improve upon that today, and they'll try and improve on their own ratio. Get more leadoff hitters on. Those are our Nissan keys to the game. Grandpa. Let's go, Grandpa. Brought his glove. Little first baseman. Here's Everett Cabrera hitting at 225. Three home runs, 15 driven in. Sandoval is in at third. Let's take a look at our Exmo. It's brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. And this is the strikeout pitch to Venable. And he goes right over the top, which has always made him very, very different in regards to the type of release he'll give a hitter. And it also enhances all the downward movement on his specialty pitches. And that's our Exmo brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. And probably not fair on a 3 2 pitch. No. But having the confidence to throw it through two, that's significant. One and two to Cabrera, five for 19 against Lincecum. Victor Sanchez doing the honors again with Lincecum out on the mound. Bruce Bochy has not made that a secret. That's who he wants to catch Tim Lincecum for. Two or three different reasons. One, it does give Buster Posey a bit of a break. And it keeps him in the line at first base. Tap slowly foul. It remains two and two. If Posey was just going to be a catcher, you would not see him in the lineup today. Day game after a night game. But because he can play first base, it allows him to stay in the lineup. And when your team's struggling to score runs, that's significant. Two balls, two strikes. Mr. Breaking out the eye black today. 
Hey, well, that's a good split, folks. There's two strikeouts, and the payoff pitch has both been the split both times. And just a little movement running away from the left handed hitter and just dying as it gets right to the base of the strike zone. And that, in the eyes of Tim Linscombe, is a thing of beauty. Here's Smith. Smith at 294. He is the one Padre hitter that's got respectable numbers when it comes to an average. He's had a good series. And it's one ball and no strikes. Carlos Quinton is on deck. Two and zero. Oh, Smith has got three career home runs off of Lincecum. And he's doing a breaking ball. Two and one. Uh, Sanchez is doing a good job of mixing his pitches up. Too often we see him struggle in the first inning. And he's throwing a lot of fastballs, and that's always a pitch for him that is hard to control here. He's throwing everything up there. And I like it. Comes back with a fastball two and two. Do not throw that one again. Belt high middle away. Seth Smith was on that one. Crawford on the overshift. High throw. Posey, not a problem. So short throws this Crawford anyway. No score. <laughs> The Giants lineup and it's brought to you by Coors Light. It'll be Blanco Pence and then Buster Posey. Two hitters in this lineup. Posey and Sandoval have good numbers lifetime against Kennedy. Sandoval hitting cleanup, then it's Morris Crawford and Sanchez. Joe Panic is hitting eighth and Lincecum ninth. On the hill today for the Padres will be Ian Kennedy. Kennedy, a five year veteran. He is 29 years old, six feet tall, 190 pounder. Not that much different than height uh, wise to Tim Linscombe. This is what he has done: five and eight with a 3.90 ERA, good strikeout to walk ratio, and more strikeouts in innings pitched. Tells he's got good stuff. A fastball that will go low to mid 90s. He will sink. He will cut that fastball. He's got a curveball, a slider, and a changeup. And he'll throw anything at every time. He's got a very nice feel of all of his pitches. Lifetime against the Giants, seven and three. With a 2.49 ERA, let's take a look at the defense playing behind it. Ian Kennedy, starting in the Padres outfield from left to right, it'll be Quinton, Venable, and Smith, Cabrera and Headley on the left side of the infield, Amarista and Medica on the right side, and Rene Rivera will be in the squad putting down the signs. So here's Blanco. Blanco two for eight in the series. He takes a strike.
four for 15 his numbers against Ian Kennedy. And at third is Headley. And this is popped out of play. It's starting in two. A bit hazy today. Try a little wrap around breaking ball and you'll see Ian Kennedy do that with with all of his pitches he'll go to both sides of the plate with him. He really understands the, the concept of front door and back door in regards to that strike zone. Pitches down low. Two balls, two strikes. Blanco fouls it back. I remember, Mike, there was a time when if you wore sunglasses like we are right now, that meant you stayed out all night. <laughs> That's exactly what that meant. And you were absolutely in trouble in the eyes of your coaching staff and your manager. Avoid sunglasses. Blanco drives it into right center field. Venable will make that Smith coming in and he'll make the play. Actually, for the longest time, I don't ever remember any players wearing sunglasses in the dugout unless they went and got the flip glasses that the infielders and outfielders wore. In other words, if you had a personal pair of sunglasses, you, those never showed up in the dugout. Now it's standard issue. Players have probably a half dozen pair of sunglasses in their locker. But you're right. I mean, you just couldn't do it. It was a testimony that you did something wrong last night. You're telling the manager that you stayed out late. Pence takes down low. Well, it, look. You were always in on time. So it didn't matter. Two and zero, or make it one and one. <laughs> well, I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could say that statement. No, and no, keep no, a straight I, face. I was with you. Yeah. Two balls and one strike. There was a good thing about being a starting pitcher, and that you only had to play every fifth day. And if there was some live live blues around the city, I'd definitely check it out. Three and one to Pence, who's four for 17 against Kennedy. You see the hitters one through four, 308 lifetime average with eight home runs allowed. Hitters five through eight. He has Simona John. Pence fouls it back three and two. Posey to follow. Got him. And that's a 3 2 changeup. So Kennedy, very much like Linscombe, going away from the fastball at 3 2 count, he gets his first strikeout. And this is a beautiful changeup. Hunter Pence way out front. Here's Posey. Mr. Posey hitting at 279.
pitches wide to Posey. One one pitch. One and two. It's a 93 mile an hour paint. And when Kennedy gets it going in a rhythm, I mean, he could really shave the corners of a strike zone. That has always been one of his strengths. Great fastball command, especially. Posey drives it to right, and that's a base hit. And he wisely puts on the brakes. Nice job by Smith. Now that is textbook perfect as to how to take a breaking ball and not a bad one at that and stay inside it and go the other way. A little curveball in the outside corner at the knees. Stay inside and watch the knob lead and then the bat head follow and he just serves it right to right field. And that is what every hitting coach in America strives to have their pupil accomplish that swing right there on that type of pitch in that type of location. Here's Sandoval. Sandoval hitting at 265. He's 10 for 42 against Kennedy with three doubles. And a call strike to even the count. Michael Morris on deck. So try and try and do something. After the first two outs were recorded, Posey at first, two balls and a strike. High fastball, two and two. Kennedy will change grips on that fastball a lot. He'll throw four seam, two seam, both sides of the plate. He understands the four corner of the strike zone with the fastball. How a knee high fastball is so different than a hand high fastball in the inside corner. Especially with two types of, of movement with the various grips. And Sandoval had a pretty good rip at that 93 mile an hour fastball. It remains two and two. Just missed it. He was not fooled on that speed. Two balls, two strikes, Sandoval. Medica holding on Posey. Down the left field line and a foul ball. Sandoval knew it pretty much out of the box, so he did not get that far from home plate. Sandoval, one home run away from a hundred. Been sitting on 99 for a while with nine home runs on the year. Next big fly going to be a milestone for him. Sandoval steps out. Well, Kennedy shook off a fastball in, shook off a slider, shook off a curveball, and finally nodded and said okay to a fastball away. Got him, and that'll end the inning. So Kennedy paints Sandoval after one. Nothing, nothing.
Making a roster move today. They've placed Angel Pagan on the disabled list, and they have called up power hitting corner infielder Adam Duval from AAA Fresno. He's 25 years old, and guys, Bruce Bochy saying today how he's planning on using him. He'll use him in double switch situations. He'll use him off the bench, and he'll give him a couple of starts at first base. Duval has arrived. He's getting into his uniform. He'll be wearing number 37, and his mom and dad, Alvin and Gina, were able to come with him. I can only imagine how they're feeling right now watching their son get ready to make his major league debut. Wayne. All right, Amy, as Carlos Quentin takes high, one ball and one strike. I know one thing, he can't get into that big league uniform fast enough. Quentin bounces this one to Sandoval. To Posey. Well, the St. Louis Cardinals make their one and only visit to AT&T Park next week, July 1st through the 3rd, and there are $14 dynamic deal tickets available for next Tuesday night. And the post-game fireworks show was added to the July 2nd game. So get a jump start on your Independence Day holiday with the Cards-Giants game and post-game fireworks Thursday, July 3rd. Enjoy day baseball in the city. Lots of things happening. Go to sfgiants.com slash tickets. Here's Headley who takes low. At least got four home runs lifetime against Lincecum. Bounces that one off of Sanchez. Who leads the league in head dings, by the yes, way? He does. One and two. I tell you what, his slider, his split, his curveball, they're all working today. And the tailing fastball makes it two and two. Dodgers are playing tonight in Kansas City. The Rockies and Cardinals are underway in Denver with St. Louis leading one nothing. That game in the fourth inning. Full count, not a headley. Tommy Medic is on deck. And a bit high, so the first base runner is a walk. And that'll bring up Medica. Medica hit a home run yesterday off of Javi Lopez. Here he takes a strike. Still not sure whether Tyler Coven would have been able to catch it or not. We are sure of one thing, we'll never know. No balls in one strike. Tap foul, nothing in two. Was the home run by Medica, his fourth of the year. What a nice extension. Uh, it was a play that we really would like to have seen not interfered with by the fan because we all felt that Tyler Colvin was going to have a chance to catch that ball. But we are all stunned. You just don't see long balls hit off of Javier Lopez, period. That's a three pitch. See you later. Right. Hector Sanchez wanted the high fastball. It wound up being a, a bolt right down the middle, and he swings right through it. His pitch usage for 2014 47% fastballs, and then everything else is about even. More sliders than anything, but you know, he's not opposed to going out and getting one of those specialty pitches established and then just ride it like a good horse. But today, the split's been fantastic.
Amarista was the guy that really hurt the Giants last night. Had a three hit night, three RBIs. Jacked up his average to 221. And the runner goes, and a bouncing ball to Joe Panic, and that'll end the inning. Well, the walk does not hurt Lincecum, and for the Giants, Michael Morris will hit first. Sportsnet Bay Area is brought to you by Subaru. Test drive the 2014 Outback at your local Subaru retailer or visit Subaru.com to learn more. Here it's nothing, nothing. And for the Giants, it'll be Michael Morris to lead things off. Yeah, it's it's. Always a good thing when the helmet beats you to the park. Although that's Murph. Murph probably had that done at midnight last night. Yeah, we <laughs> want to see him come up the steps. Here's Morris hitting 286 and he takes a strike. No balls in one strike. Almost the same spot. Morse is one for five lifetime against Ian Kennedy. I would think Kennedy would be a guy that he would hit well. Off the plate, two balls in one strike. A lot of pitchers we see pitch Ken or, uh, Morse in. Kennedy hasn't done that in this at bat. I think it's a big part of Kennedy to establish that he will throw a strike on both sides of the plate. Breaking ball hit well to right field and off the bricks, but foul. So it looked like Morris recognized the breaking ball early. Out of play again. This one back into the seats. It remains two balls and two strikes. Kennedy just painting that outside corner with 93 mile an hour two seam movement. Now that's movement that's going to start off the outside part of the plate, didn't have it. Come back into the strike zone. Just wraps it around that outside corner. 
Here's the 2 2 pitch. And he got him with a fastball up and in. So he did finally come in. That really was as beautifully placed as you could possibly put a, a four seam fastball above the hands. And just tie him up in knots. Strikeout number three. So here's Crawford. Crawford hitting 259. One for three on. Monday came back yesterday and did the same two for six in the series. And the one out to Crawford is a strike. One ball and one strike. And he drops a 1 0 change up on him. So right now, Kennedy's got it working. Best defense for the Giants is get him out of that windup, get him in the stretch because he's got a good rhythm going. They had him in the stretch for one at bat. That was Sandoval's at bat in the first. Hit well into center field. Lots of room out there, however, for Venable. Now it starts to carry, and it's off the bottom of the wall. Crawford's got a shot for three. He is going to make it. I think William Venable got fooled by the wind. Uh, that does not happen very often. He's a very reliable outfielder. But when you got the triple hit machine up there, Brandon Crawford, and he puts a backspin on a fastball out over the plate, gets extended, and watch him drift, drift, and all of a sudden it takes off, and he cannot catch up. He hits the base of the wall. And for Brandon Crawford, who just keeps hitting three baggers, that is number eight on the year. And I think he thought like everybody else thought it was going to get caught. Well, uh, once the lead now in triples tied with Gordon and Rios. So here's Hector Sanchez with the infield in, and he cues this one uh, foul. You don't know how many opportunities you're going to get off of Kennedy in a game. You got one here. You got to cash in. No, you're right. You have to avoid the strikeout. You really have to battle. Can't get long. When you're thinking fly ball. Right now with an infield in, you're thinking anything. Just don't strike out. This should do it. This time Venable gets black back in plenty of time, and the Giants lead one nothing. And, and that's as impressive and bad as the triple was. The sacrifice fly. The way that Kennedy is throwing the ball, you really want to stay out of a two strike situation. And he gets a good fastball to do something with it, and he gets the job done. Nice AB. So here's Panic. Nice to have a lead. At home. Haven't seen that yet this home stand. Very high to Joe Panic. 0 for 3 on Monday. 0 for 2 yesterday. One ball and one strike. One thing you're going to see a lot of up here is a lot of pitchers that can get off speed stuff over the plate in fastball counts. See the numbers for Panic 325, 321 with five big flies and 47 RBIs. Is that what it was? Yep. Out of play, one and two. Two and two, not a Joe Panic. Lindsay come on deck. Get on the ground, it'll be backhanded by Medica, and that'll end the inning. Giants on the board on the triple and sacrifice fly, it's one nothing.
meet Nicole Elwood. She's the winner of the 2014 All-Star Teacher Program. You're a special education teacher for 7th and 8th grade at Twin Hills Charter Middle School in Sebastopol, North Bay. Congratulations. You won $20,000. What are you going to do with the money? Well, you know, it's a staff decision, but I'm really hoping that some of the money goes to the PE program and some to the science program, and then the rest will figure it out. But I'm just so excited right now. Yeah, It's quite an honor that you've received and, and uh, do in so much of, of your hard work that you've put into this. What's your favorite part, though, about teaching, Nicole? Uh, I love watching the kids grow. I mean, it just, they change, they grow, they develop, they become young men and women who are, are going to go out and do good in the world, and that's the best part about it. So. $20,000, Nicole Elwood, congratulations. She's our 2014 All-Star Teacher winner. Dwayne and Mike. Yes. I think there's always been one or two or three teachers that I don't care how old you are, you'll never forget them. Oh, no question. Miss Van Dyke in second grade cuffed me right behind the head. I'll not forget that. You deserved it. There's Nicole, and there is the reaction of the announcement that she indeed won. So, what did you do to get cut behind the head? <laughs> it was uh, maybe once a day I got cuffed. I, I, I have no problem believing that. Here's Kennedy who pops this one. A pop ups and fly balls are an issue today. And Blanca will chase off Panic. I might add. It didn't hurt. Just kind of took you off a little bit. Here's Venable. I never thought recess was long enough. That was my problem. That was definitely the best part of the day. Six minute recess wasn't cutting it for me. We actually had a 20 minute morning recess. What good is that? That's. You break a sweat and now what? You got to come in? Oh, so come on, man. If you're, if you're batting down the lineup, man, good luck. I was in favor of a recess, a recess after every class. We're, we're setting education back a lot. Here's Morris and Morris in front of Blanco, and that'll end the inning. Six pitch inning for Lincecum. Lincecum will lead things off. We'll try to get back on track. Here it's 1 nothing Giants. Ball on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area is brought to you by Big O Tires. Tires, service, straight talk. Big O Tires, the team you trust. One nothing Giants. Lincecum Blanco Pence here in the third inning. He's arrived. Big leagues. Sight. 
This is, it, it, it's going to take every ounce of strength for his mom not to run that dugout and give him a hug. Well, Adam Duvall, welcome to San Francisco, kid. And there's not a guy in that dugout that does not appreciate the walk that Duvall's taking right now. You could ask that kid to do anything right now and he'd do it. Hey, would you run out to the bleachers and get me a beer? Not a problem. <laughs> yeah. A little vulnerable right now, wouldn't you think? Well, he's climbed the mountain. He's planted a flag. And then hadn't had it at bat yet. Two and two to Lincecum. But for all the folks back home, all the people that supported him in his ascent to the big leagues, he just justified it. He didn't, that know, he didn't know whether to sit or stand up or walk or jog. Outside full count to Linsican. Now your triple A buddies are going to be the ones that you're going to gravitate to first. There's Juan Perez. Linsican look out. He's our lucky would hit the ball right in the forehead. That would be a bad first day in the big leagues. <laughs> goodness. Heads up. Pwah. Hit up the middle. Maurice will not throw. Let's come flying down the line with a hit. See, Duval shows up, they start hitting. Unbelievable. This, you never know which one of those guys down there has got the hitting magic. And what an at bat from Tim Linscombe. Challenge fastball. Kennedy doesn't want to walk him, throws it right over the plate. Linscombe goes right back up the middle, and Amarista, who's really been the MVP of this series so far, almost pulls it off. And you see Duval put a clap on for his teammate. All right, now he's one of the guys. All right, here's Blanco. Such a plus when you have that hitter lead off an inning and hit, a pitcher's already thinking that's an out. But when you get that pitcher on base, some good things happen. Blanco shows bunt. And Linscombe can run a little bit too. It's not like having a, a slug out there in the base pass plugging everything up. He can run. Well, let's check out mom, see if she's happy. Oh yeah. Mom looks like a player. Uh, Dad's Dad's gonna have that grin on for a month. Oh yeah. Two and zero. Oh, so now you get Kennedy out of the stretch early in the inning. Close right field. They pinch the gap in right center. Blanco leaning on a 2 0 pitch, thinking it was going to be a strike. So Joe Panic. Duval really were a nice 1 2 punch down there in the lineup for the Fresno Grizzly. Talking it over with Sergio Romo. It's hard to quit smiling your first day in the big business. Two balls and one strike. I was even smiling watching Gaylord's car that first day. <laughs> Don't tell me he got you with the old gotta wash my car rookie trick. Yeah. I asked him, you want you want the wheels? He goes, yeah, I think the wheels with that too. And those are the credentials as Duval climbed the ladder. Big gears everywhere he went. Lots of power. 100 RBI a year in San Jose in 2012. This year he was tearing up the PCL. In the center field for Venable. It's so important when you get to the big leagues that you feel like you've earned it. And Adam Duvall has. Here's Pence. Pence struck out in the first.
Giants would like to see Lincecum run a little bit. The fastest we see him move is when he comes off the plane. It's like four steps. He's from the top of the stairs to the bottom. And every time Bruce Bochy watches him do it, he shakes his head. He's like a feather going down the steps. And uh, Hunter Pence just had a hanger. And he just missed it. We were in the lobby one night in San Diego going down to get our bags. Linscom got his before us, and all of a sudden we see him pushing the suitcase that has rollers, hop on the top of the suitcase, and then right across the lobby in it. A little about 20 miles an hour. Like a skateboard, right? Yep. And I looked at Brett Alexander, the Giants director of travel, and he just kind of shook his head. He is a remarkable you know, athlete. You got to blame the manufacturers that put wheels on suitcases. That's who you blame. Which, by the way, was the greatest invention of all time. Yeah, thank you very much. Hunter Pence just got underneath this one. Two outs. And here's Posey. Buster with a sharp single to right in his first at bat. Side corner 0 and 1. You see where Adam's from. He's from Louisville. 25 years old. You get to the big leagues. That means you've had a fair share of minor league at bats. Foul at the plate. 0 and 2 to Buster Posey. And if you're 25, that usually means. You certainly had three years in college, maybe four. The ball went to University of Louisville. Oh, and two. Lined to left. Now coming in is Quentin, and he can't hang on. Lincecum's going to third, and he's going to make it. Carlos Quentin did indeed look like a DH on that play. Well, that's going to extend the inning. I mean, barreled by Posey, but really looking almost a pretty routine. And he does not get a good jump, and then it becomes a wrestle match, and in the end, he runs out of glove, and it's right at the tip. And he can't put it in the pocket, so the Giants are going to get another opportunity here to do some serious damage against Kennedy. And you can see Romo get down, get down, get down. That's the get down song. So Sandoval will step up now with runners at the corners. Down low, 1 and 0. This is where you really want to take advantage. They give you a gift like that. They extend an inning because they don't make a defensive play. This is where you want to jump on it. Kennedy staying away, and Sandoval pops it down the left field line and out of play. You can see Duvall, it's not the first time he's met these guys. He's had a number of spring trainings with the guys in that dugout. Into the gap. Clinton dives and he can't get it. And they're going to hold Buster Posey. And probably a good move. Scoring is Lindsay coming. It's two nothing, and that's the two out knock they've been looking for.
The defense opens up an opportunity and Pablo Sandoval just punched a hole through the door. And now they have a chance to really make it hurt. He stays in the outside part of the play right at the belt gets a little bit too much play here. And for the second consecutive play just not enough glove from Quentin. An RBI single and a two out scenario for the Panda. And here's Morris. Posey and Sandoval aboard. And a swing and a miss, 0 and 1. Looking fastball away. That's all that old one pitch told you. He was sitting on off speed. Got him. And that run the inning. So Kennedy limits the damage. Giants on the board. It's 2 nothing, San Francisco. the fourth inning Cabrera Smith and Carlos Quentin we'll see how Linscombe does after spending a little bit of time on the bases in the top of the inning. Two and zero. Cabrera struck out in the first. Taps it foul. It's two balls and one strike. It's 
number 43 for Lincecum. Three and two. And look at where we were at last night. I don't think anybody's in our seats. Except for that. Well, right there on the end of the Coors Light Silver Bullpen. Yeah, nobody's in our chairs. We broke them. Got to keep them warm for somebody. Out of play. Hey, well, we did have a view from there. Is a view of a lot of things, but one is in center field where they got the fresh produce. And if I look at it in my binoculars out there. It's a hit. Oh yeah, it, it, it's very cool. Get on the ground to Crawford. Crawford stays with it. And they just got him. Here's our AT&T U-verse rewind. It happened in July of last year. Tim Lincecum. And what did he do? He flipped a no-hitter. And that was pitch number 148. And he got a good buster hug right there after that final pitch. He was a wet noodle by the time he threw that last pitch. I think he probably had another 15 pitches in him. Bruce Bochy just didn't want to have to see it. He didn't want to see the 150 pitch limit. There's the Giants no hitters. Linscum, Kane, Sanchez. All since the Giants have moved into AT&T. Two of them were here. Sanchez and Kane. Linscum, of course, in San Diego. Montefusco, Halicki, Gaylord Perry, Juan Marshall. It's quite a list. Overshift is on for Smith, and he takes low. One ball and one strike. Adam Duval with Eric Ortega. Hit the other way. And out of play. The one two to Smith. Hit on the ground sharply. Buster plays. He's got it. Two outs. Nice play, Buster Posey. Well, this Sunday is Pixar Day at the ballpark. The special event package will include a ticket as the Giants will take on the Reds and the Giants themed bobblehead of Woody from Disney Pixar's Toy Story films. Following the conclusion of the game, Pixar Day special event ticket holders will be invited down to the field to watch Toy Story. Call. 415-972-2298 or go to sfgiants.com slash special events. It does not get old. You think those are the same two that just get passed around? This, no. I'll give you a chance to think about this. No. Or you think those are new? Absolutely. Then why don't we have? I want to get that. I want to get that. I want to get that. Might be a suggestion for a birthday or Christmas gift.
you'll get my bobblehead at the gates. Psh. If they're lucky, they'll get my bobblehead. Tell them, Crook and Kipe. That's right. The Reds are in town for a four-game series. Saturday and Sunday, it's the Brandon weekend. The Saturday game, the first 40,000 fans, they're going to receive either a belt or Crawford bobblehead courtesy of pg &E. And then Sunday, kids 14 and under, a 105 start belt. Crawford growth chart banner presented by Nestle's Drumstick. So the big weekend, the Brandon weekend. Crawford tripled in the second inning. Here he takes a pretty good pitch, but called the ball. One ball and no strikes. Sanchez and then panic. Bottom of the fourth inning. Crawford swings and fouls it out of play to even the count at a ball and a strike. Another sellout today. Week day. Day games here are always a hit. Here's the one one to Crawford. Good change up one and two. One ball, two strikes. So Crawford strikes out. That's five strikeouts for Kennedy, and that'll bring up Sanchez. Okay, bangs a triple off. He likes to strike about the next time up. Yes, you do. There's the duck boat coming into the cove. Hector Sanchez, a sacrifice fly. Look at. Sanchez's RBI numbers is really pretty remarkable considering he's hitting 214. He's got 25 RBIs. That's four fewer than Hunter Pence. Little jam shot. Here comes Cabrera and he throws him out. That was a big league jam job right there. If Hector Sanchez had any speed whatsoever, he'd have beat that out. Well, right up the bat towards the handle, explodes everything. About eight pieces flying everywhere. Digging as hard as he possibly can, and in the end, he's beaten by two steps. So here's Panic, who bounced out to first. And he takes wide one and oh. Two balls, no strikes. I always talk about how numbers affect baseball players and really any professional athlete but when you're in the minor leagues numbers are really big and that's the important thing when you get to the big league level and all of a sudden you have to put those aside because those can really put unusual pressure on you then it pops it up it'll be the third baseman Headley calling and catching and that'll end the inning. Fifth inning coming up. It's two nothing Giants.
with Coors Light. Enter to win a Coors Light refresherator every time the Giants hit a home run at AT&T Park. Text REFRESH to 49375. First pitch in for a strike with the fastball from Litzka. Back Headley taken all the way. Two nothing Giants. We're at the top of the fifth inning. And Litzka. Nice feel for his pitches today, and it has been that way since the first inning. Headley drew a one out walk in the second. Medica is on deck. Blocked by Sanchez, two and two. Pitch count wise, this is about as good as Linskin's been this year. Oh, you're right. It's common to see him throw between 20 and 30 pitches in the first inning alone. And that that was a major obstacle he overcame today. Just a little bit outside. Time you see an umpire put his hands on his hips. The argument's over. Kind of like mom. Exactly like mom. Got him. And again, 3-2. He stays away from the fastball. And another swing through strike three. And you cannot throw a better breaking ball than this. That little skip, did I see that? Oh, he's feeling it. Gathered, look at his back foot, that right inside part of the foot. It stays very solid, very firm, no roll in his foot whatsoever. Good push. And good control of the snap of his wrist. See ya. Here's Medica who picks up and in. It's one ball and no strikes. Medica struck out in the second. Two and zero. Oh. Got a cut thinking he was going to get something to hit, and he does, and he fouls it out of play. Two balls and one strike. I think Medica a little uh, unhappy. He didn't do more with that pitch. He took a whole lap around Sanchez and Amari. He, he did the Tulowitzki. He did the Tulowitzki dance. The whole time he was not blinking. He was talking to himself. Two and two. Hit on the ground, Crawford. Two down. Time to log on to CSNBarry.com and decide the player of the game. Your vote counts. Winners will be revealed during the Giants postgame live. Follow the action on the diamond like never before with enhanced Bloomberg stats and much, much more. Giants in game live on CSNBarry.com. Log on right now and vote. Here's Amarista who bounced out. To panic. Grab some pine meat. Couple of gamer babes. You can tell. And his first pitch break the ball. Quick 0 1. Great. Once you start throwing strikes, you get umpires looking for him.
Tried to elevate the fastball. I mean, he threw it right where he wanted it. One ball, two strikes. And this is fouled off the backstop. The one two pitch. Driven to right. Pence is there and he puts it away. Another one two three inning. And Lincecum's going to lead things off. Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area is brought to you by the Solar Company. Not just any solar company, the Solar Company. Switch to solar and save. A 2 0 lead, and here's Lincecum. Lincecum is one for one in this game. Lincecum raised his average all the way up to 087. Well, that's significant. He started the day at 045. Still on the bingo card, though. That's the one he, that's the one you got to look for right there, that last one. Middle in. Straight fastball. Well, there was definitely no take sign in the 01 count. Actually, maybe a better pitch for Lincecum would be a changeup down the name. Looking for it. Right about knee high. It's the one he can hit out. And he can do it. Yeah, we're not looking for stinking singles here for Carlisle. Well, you watch him. Take batting practice and he flips him out of right field side all the time. Balls, two strikes. Look out, three and two. Ooh. 
check in with Amy G. All right, guys, more big news for Adam Duvall. More family has arrived. We mentioned that his parents, Alvin and Gina, were able to make it. And now his host mom from the San Jose Giants team found out that he was going to make his major league debut. So she drove on up. It's Tiffany Fuente. She's sitting with Adam's parents. And you guys well know that those host families in A-ball become like your real families and serve as a real lifeline for these guys. Yeah, Wayne? Absolutely. You spend a lot of time in San Jose. You can have like eight different moms for crying out loud. And what would be wrong with that? Nothing. Marco takes a strike. Marco taps this one foul. Blanco trying to reach for Hunter Pence. Wraps one into Triple's alley. Can anybody get there? Yes. Smith runs it down, and that is very frustrating if you're Gregor Blanco, who's dying for hits. Uh, you're right. I mean, and that's just, you got ATT. When they set the defense prior to the pitch, they pitch the gap in right center. Um, this is a double, triple. And in the other ballpark here, it's a big league hang with him, even for a, a right fielder with average speed. There's Pence. Pence up the middle, off the end of the bat, is Amarista's there, and that'll end the inning. Sixth inning coming up. It'll be the catcher Rivera and then Kennedy. Like you can't even imagine. Check them out. You see them on your screen. And to come out and enjoy any one of those four games, visit sfgiants.com for tickets. Here's Rene Rivera, who's 0 for 1. The only base runner for the Padres in this game. A walk to Chase Headley in the second inning. We're going to foul one ball and one strike. Rivera hit a ball out to Hunter Pence in the third. Hey, 
Tim Stauffer is getting loose. Out of play, one and two. So it's kind of an odd time for a manager to have to make the call when you're down by two in the fifth inning. See if you want to use a pinch hitter or not. Well, I mean, Kinley's throwing the ball well. I mean, it's not like he's he's looking like he needs help in any way, shape, or form. But the way that Lindscombe is throwing, I gotta believe that Mark Black's thinking he's not gonna get a lot of options or opportunities. So bottom line, if Rene Rivera gets on base, they will probably pinch hit. Yep, I would think so. Which is why Stauffer's down the bullpen heating up like he means it. Out of play. Pitches off. Well, we'll drift a bit on Morris. He's there and he makes the catch. All right, time now for our Geico quarter of the day. It comes from Bruce Bochy on biggest issue during a tough stretch. He said the rotation put us in a good position. Now they've hit a bump in the road. Some of them. It happens. It's important we get out of this, and it's going to be our starting pitching that gets us out of this. And it always goes back to that, doesn't it? Yeah, you're right. It, it, it's so important. It's your mean, starting staff yeah. give you a chance to win. Here's Kennedy who popped out to Blanco who takes a strike. So with the leadoff hitter Rivera flying out, Kennedy stays in the game. Oh and two. That's just a nice easy rhythm. A quick discard. And here's Venable. And you see the pitches. He had 18 in the first. And it's the most he's throwing. Seven, 17 in the fifth. Third inning, a six-pitch inning. And that's that's the gift. Yeah, that helped. Venable has struck out and he's popped out. Definitely have seen that pitch call a strike today. Did not missed by much. That one's called a strike to even the count. And he comes right back in a 1 0 count with that big curveball, and then nobody going to look for that thing. Panic from the outfield grass. Through six innings, still only one base runner for the Padres, and that was a walk.
Area is brought to you by Heffernan Insurance Brokers, offering business and personal insurance, employee benefits, and financial services. Visit us at hefins.com and by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. Here at at and Park, the Giants with a 2-0 lead as Buster Posey is going to leave things off. And so coming through six innings is just one walk away from being perfect. And a strike to Buster Posey who's two for two today. One ball and one strike. Get on the ground into right field, a base hit. Here's the three. That's called the what? The magic one do, baby. All right, time now for our Ford right choice to go back to the third inning. In an RBI situation, as the inning extended, a fastball at the belt away, and Sandoval goes the opposite way, just out of the outstretched arm of Carlos Quinn. He would knock in the second run. That is our Ford right choice. So here's the Sandoval, one for two. He takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. Out of play. So Kennedy got Sandoval out on his front foot. Fastball one and two. Posey with a lead at first. Got him. Same fastball location that he struck him out with in the first inning. So here's Morris. It's just an area that you just don't see Sandoval swinging this a lot at. Maybe, no. maybe a high fastball or something in the dirt. Not around that knee high area. He's usually pretty good at laying some pretty good contact on that. Morris chases and it's 0 and 1. Morris just has not picked up Kennedy today at all. The right field and a base hit. Morris may have made a mistake. Cut off. And that was a mistake. Hey, if that ball is online, Amarista did not cut that ball off. There's no, no real reason to do it. So a, a good slider. And I think that the big fellow was sitting something soft. He goes the opposite way with it. And he's thinking double all the way. Now Venable's got, or Seth Smith's got a very accurate arm. And that thing should not have been cut off. Uh, you could see. Cabrera was moving in towards the inner part of the diamond, so maybe he was offline a little bit. But wasn't going to do any damage if you let it go. Oh. 
So a one out double and uh, the Padres want to gather the troops together is that and Perez? talk about it. Ron Perez in the game now to run for Morris. Yes it is. Right. So team picture on top of the mound. So Crawford's going to be walked. Victor Sanchez does have a sacrifice fly in this game. But back might be ready to make a move here as you watch Tim Stover. Doing a lot of sinkers right now. So here's Hector Sanchez. So they're going to let him go at Sanchez. And remember the last time that they faced in this scenario, the one or third less than two out, Sanchez came up with a sack fly to center. One of the RBIs today. It was an outstanding at bat. This is not going to do it. Yes. And here's Panic. Well, so Panic can pick up his teammate right here. Although, if you're Hector Sanchez, after a guy walks to get to you, those are the ones where you just want to. Well, yeah, that's what you want to do. Screen. He's thinking about it. Panic has bounced out and popped out. One ball and no strikes. Two and oh. One thing we found out about Panic, and he's got a pretty good eye. He'll make you work. And he's not in any hurry. Should be something to hit if you're Panic. And he rolls it softly to Amarista. And now in the inning. Seventh inning coming up.
to you by your local Toyota dealer. Giants have added single runs in the second and in the third. Both Kennedy and Lincecum have been outstanding. Lincecum, one base runner, a walk. And here's Everett Cabrera. And the first pitch is high. One ball and no strikes. Perez now in left. Remember, he went into pinch run for Michael Morse. Hit on the ground to Buster Posey. One out. Then here's Smith. Eighty two pitches for Tim Lincecum. Oh, he's in a good place for pitchers. Pitch count wise, he couldn't be any better. By Lincecum standards. Yeah, by Greg Maddox standards. Whew, Here in the 14th lot. inning. <laughs> 82 pitches. Remember, we've seen Lincecum throw 148 and have something on it on the 148th pitch. High to Smith. He's bounced out twice. Think about Smith, and he's the kind of hitter that grows during the ball game. He gets better against you as the game wears on. Pretty good curveball. You saw Hector Sanchez catch that in the outside corner and wince when he didn't get the call from Adam Amari. Setting that target right in the outside corner. Yeah, I can see why he called it a ball. With a breaking ball, you don't really have to set on a, on a corner, especially away. Not a 1 0 count. You can set that target right down behind the plate. Two and one, not a Smith. Shift is on for Smith. Hit out to center field. Blanco freezes. Just like we were last night. Two outs. We were freezing. And here's Carlos Quentin. Quentin walked, checked it. Quentin bounced out to third. He's popped out to right. He is not going to wait around. He will not. On the ground to Crawford. Crawford wrestles this one and throws him out. A seventh pitch, seventh inning. Now this crowd's starting to get into it. Giants two, Padres nothing.
Jim Litzikin's going to lead off again. He's one for two. The other story is is he is shutting out the Padres by only allowing one walk. That's it. No balls in one strike. Let's it come single to open up the third. Scored. And struck out looking on a 3 2 count in the fifth. One ball and one strike. You go a game like this, and the one guy you never really think about it is the guy calling balls and strikes, and it intensifies for a balls and strike umpire. That's a cut. Base hit. Left field. Man, the day did. Second time he's had a leadoff single in this ball game. And he hit that ball to left field like he hits for a living. Yeah, Tony Gwynn would have been proud of this one. Stay inside, just sting. That's why you see at bats like this, and there's no reason why this guy can't be a good hitter. As good an athlete as he is, and he's one of the best in that Giants clubhouse. And that's a thing of beauty right there. And Kennedy very quickly gets in the stretch. So here's Blanco. Blanco's 0 for 3. Swing and a miss. Blanco hit one out into Triple's alley that by all rights should have been that a triple, but Smith, who's playing way over into right center field, made a nice running catch. Well, you can see where he set up. I mean, that's 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 almost like there's nobody in right field. Blanco shortens up to bunt. One ball and one strike. One and one to Blanco. Shortens up to Bun again. Two balls and one strike. Well, the leash is a pretty long one for Ian Kennedy. 109 pitches. That's not an incredibly large number. I, I think every starting pitcher should have the ability to throw 125 pitches. You should have that strength in your shoulder. Buck did a, such a good job of watching close pitches go by trying to bunt. Waves at that one. It's two and two. Let's look up now. Hitting 120. I know that's important. Well, it is. He's off the bingo card and he's on the interstate. It's always a good thing. Got him. All right, let's check in with Amy G. Amy. All right, gentlemen, time now for our fan photo contest. It is sponsored by AT&T. Get out your pictures, your best Giants pictures, and tweet them with hashtag CSNBA fan photo. Make sure to include your name and your hometown. You might make it onto one of our broadcasts today. You're looking at Tom and Logan. They come from Elk Grove, and they are part of the Yes movement. Dwayne. All right, here's Pence. And a strike to Hunter Pence, the yes movement. Hunter Pence 0 for 3. Breaking ball wide, one ball and one strike. Kennedy thought he had it. I do too. That was a good one. That was a good one. Medica holding on Lincecum. Outside, two balls and a strike.
Two and two. Stays on that outside corner. Again, Kennedy squirms thinking he had strike three, so he's going to take a walk. A whole bat has gone on that outside corner. Here he tries a backdoor two seam movement and just misses a little bit high. And look at him. He wants it. Three and two. Little flip job, and it's going to fall. Let's check out a McDonald's two stories. This came last year when Tim Lincecum no hit the Padres in San Diego in July, and that preserved the no hitter. It was a terrific catch by Hunter Pence. And about 40 pitches later, he got it. Or 70 pitches Whatever. later. So that's going to be it for Ian Kennedy and Bud Black making a call to the bullpen. When it's time for a change, send speedy oil change and auto service. Your oil change tune up and repair experts. We'll be back. Cueto, and that is game two of the Reds Giants series. You can come out on Friday and put your orange on. And by the way, dinner is on us. That's right. Just go to sfgiants.com slash tickets and use the coupon code orange to get your $10 food and beverage credit for the purchase of a ticket. It's the heart of a summertime baseball and a great time to get out to the ballpark for Orange Friday. Remember, the coupon code is orange. What else would it be on Orange Friday? Buster Posey, four for 12 lifetime against Stoffer with a double and a home run. There you see Stoffer's number, 22nd time he's coming in, two and two with a 3.96 ERA. He's basically like hitting off a starting pitcher in the bullpen. You get four looks, fastball, curveball, slider, changeup, and the fastball velocity will be around 91, like you just saw at the low 90s. No balls in one strike. And that pitch is wide to even the count. Outside two and one on deck is Pablo Sandoval. Sandoval has got some major ownage on Tim Stoffer. But first things first, it's two and one to Buster Posey.
No swing, three and one. Checked it on a changeup. Doug Eddings, first base umpire, making the no swing call. No, he did not go. Now full count. Perfect location on a 3 1 with a fastball. Nice pitch. And this is certainly not a situation where, where even with Posey up there at an open base, you would take it. Not with one out. He's got a pitch to him. He needs to throw strikes. Out of play. Again to the outside corner with a fastball. Posey more than happy to go the opposite way. Posey with three hits today, two of which have gone to right field. Lincecum at second, Pence at first. Foul back, he had a good rip. Quick chat between Rivera and Stoffer. Well into right center field. On the move is Venable looking up off the bottom of the wall. Lincecum scores. Here comes Pence. He is safe at the plate. And it's 4 0 Giants. Buster Posey, 4 for 4 today. And a day with the bat. Take a look at the location. He had to come in, and that's fat T ball location right over the middle. And he stays inside it, and another at bat that goes on the right field side of second base, and this one to the base of the Visa side in right center. And this is how you clean the bags. And it almost gets knocked out of here. Here's Sandoval. Sandoval takes a curveball for a strike. Lincecum has started two rallies today, one in the third and one here in the seventh. Just in tight to even the count. Both those runs charged to Ian Kennedy. So when you look at his line, it's going to look okay. He really threw the ball well, I thought. Yeah, I did too. Out of play, one and two. Well, baseball is not always fair. You can have a day where you throw the ball well, give up four Ernie's and take a loss, and and to all the world, the box score the next day, it looks like he got lit. He did not. Sandoval lines it and it's going to fall in front of the right fielder Smith. So Onage is Onage and now Perez is coming up. By himself, as he should be. Perez batting for the first time. 
and he takes outside one and oh. Two and oh. Ball rolls away. It's three balls and no strikes. Doesn't look like Lenskin was paying attention to all the normal traditions. Yeah, well, if he did, I'd get worried. Doesn't look too stressed. Maybe that's just his way of dealing with pressure. So Perez will take the walk. Pretty e easy decision now for Bud Black. Stopper comes in, he allows a double, a single, and a walk. When it's time for a change, think speedy. Oil change and auto service, your oil change tune up and repair experts. Check out Yahoo Sports Talk Live presented by Comcast Business Class. It's hosted by Elmer Kozumor. It'll be today at 5 right here in Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. And a good line of guests, including one of our favorites, Tim Kawakami. New pitcher now for Bud Black will be the only left hander in their bullpen. Alex Torres, we saw him in last night's ball game. Low to mid 90 fastball. Hard slider to change up. He will throw everything, and they are all swinging missed type pitches. You see the unusual cap that he wears. He's the only guy in the big leagues wearing the the recommended protective helmet for pitchers. In the dirt, what an oak. Kind of looks like Super Mario. See your base runners. Posey up third. Sandoval at second. Perez at first. Outside two and zero. Oh.
Usually that's a pretty lonely seat, but with Linscombe and, and the way that he is, and the demeanor that he has, I think he's enjoying the moment. To be honest, I think you're right. Infield in, and I mean all the way in. And it's three and zero to Crawford. Well, it's the easiest RBI to get. And that's the ball four with the bases loaded. See if Crawford's got the green light. He very well might. We'll never know. Three and one. Crawford with 36 runs batted in. He's third on the team in that department. Three and two. Well, how about that? A three one change up and a good one. All prepared to let out a little shaft. You're looking fastball. You get great arm action. Can totally convince that you're getting a fastball. You get after it, and it's about four feet short. You miss it by three feet. That is a good changeup. Three and two. Crawford steps out. Said right here, other than you need to throw a strike, and I think Alex Torres already knows that. It's whatever you can throw over, I mean, he just proved he's not afraid to throw a 3 1 changeup, so you would think that he's not afraid to throw a 3 2 changeup or a slider. I don't think Alex Torres is afraid of anything. He's going to throw what he thinks he can get Crawford out of. Changeup. 3 and 2. And the Crawford was all over it. Oh, he was. Guy fouls it straight back. He's on you. He's got you timed. 94 mile an hour, four seam fastball, a little cut, and I'm talking right at the belt over the middle of the plate. It's a nice swing, though. Those are the swings Bruce Bochy likes to see. Yeah, Crawford's always been a good high ball hitter. Off pitch. Got him. And a high strike, a 3 2 changeup. Adam Hamari getting an earful from the Giants' dugout. Take a look at the location with the changeup. That was above the belt. We haven't seen that call to strike today, so it winds up being a rough at bat. Sanchez has got another shot with the bases loaded with one out in the sixth inning. He popped out. Here he lines it to left, but it's going to be right at Quentin, and that'll end the inning. Giants score twice, they lead 4 0.
Cincinnati Reds in town to play the Giants for four tomorrow night. You'll see that game at seven o'clock on NBC Bay Area. And then Friday 7 p.m. on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area with Giants pregame live at 630. The homestand will continue with the Reds and the Giants take a day off Monday and finish out the 10 game homestand with three against the Cardinals. So get your tickets. If you can't get out here to the yard join us on TV if you would we'd love to have you. Here you see the score it's four nothing. And the hitter will be Chase Headley. And Hedley takes low. Hedley has been the only base runner for the Padres, and that was a one-out walk in the second inning. And if you're wondering about the long about the long half inning that Linscombe had to endure, it was 24 minutes and 10 seconds. So that's a long time to sit down. Well, it is. But remember, he didn't sit down the whole inning. He was on base, got a base hit to lead it off, and because he was on base, kept moving. I don't think the 24 hour wait is really going to do him any harm. There's a strike to make it one and two. Headley. To be followed by Medica, to be followed by Amarista. Get on the ground to Posey. Posey to Linsicum. One down in the eighth. Lenskum has locked into all four pitches since the first inning. And that is something that he has not done in a while this season. An 18 pitch first inning, that's the most pitches that he's had in any one inning. But in that inning, in those 18 pitches, he let the Padres know he had a feel with everything that he can throw. And he has been able to maintain it all the way into the eighth. Here's Medica, who's 0 for 2. He struck out in the second. He bounced out to Crawford in the fifth. And a curveball. And it's one ball and no strike. Uh, you can hear the 41,000 umpires here in attendance a little unhappy with this first pitch curveball, not called a strike. Very close. Two and zero oh to Medica. Amarista is on deck. And the 2 0 is a strike to make it 2 and 1. Change up. It's a split finger fastball, but Linscombe calls his change, but he's throwing a 2 0. Medica had none chance. Let's come shook off three pitches. He wants a fastball away. One out, top of the eighth. Two and two to Tommy Medica. Popped him up. Buster Posey doing the pop up dance. Two down in the eighth. The best at bat in this game off of Lincecum came. In the fifth inning, when Amarista lined out to Hunter Pence. And remember, he had a good game yesterday as well with three hits. They bunch the gaps, slight lean towards left center with Blanco in center. Blanco on the move. Side retired. Lincecum is going to go to the ninth inning without allowing anything more than a walk in this game. And they are on their feet here at AT&T Park for the little guy that they adore. Four nothing Giants.
This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the San Francisco Giants and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of San Francisco Baseball Associates, LLC. 4 nothing Giants here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Panic's going to lead things off and then Tim Lincecum. And Panic takes a strike. Torres back out there after doing a nice job in the seventh. Panic is 0 for 3. And here he takes down low one ball and one strike. Pretty good day for that kid. Well, a couple of hits. One and two. He's taken history into the ninth. Yeah, I'd say pretty good day. So one out here in the eighth, and let's hear the ovation for Tim Lincecum. Well, you said it at the close of the inning. Tim Lincecum has a very special relationship with the folks here in San Francisco. They love him. He's two for three. And he has scored two runs. Two balls and no strikes. Think he's going to be a pair of shoes? I don't. I don't think he knows how to do it any other way than just the play. Maybe that's not smart. I have no idea. Three and oh. I know one thing. He's. Torres is afraid of him. <laughs> Absolutely. You get a couple knocks, they start to take notice. Nope. Once it comes on base percentage, he's going to go up today. Two knocks and a walk. Blanco needs a hit. He's 0 for 3. Hunter Pence is on deck. And a strike. So Torres trouble throwing strikes to Lincecum, but not to. Gregor Blanco. Swing and a miss. Nothing in two. Well, I change up is just his money pitch. When he couldn't get the fastball in the strike zone four times to Linsko, and he goes right to the change up against Blanco. Boom, boom, 0 oh 2. Pitching Blanco backwards with a couple off speed pitches, setting up the fastball at 92. In the dirt, nice play by Rivera. It's two balls and two strikes. Hunter Pence to follow. Turned out to be a very hazy and now foggy Wednesday afternoon at the ballpark.
Blanco on the ground to short. Cabrera to Amarista. Not in time as Blanco beats it out. Stay tuned for the post game wrap. That's coming up in just a bit. And I'll also talk about the game tomorrow morning with Murph and Mac on KNBR 680. So Bud Black comes out. And with Blanco at first and one out, we're going to get a new pitcher when it's time for a change. Think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune up and repair experts. Thayer will face Hunter Pence with Blanco at first. Two outs here in the eighth. Take a look at the numbers for Dale Thayer through 36, 3 and 2 with a 193 ERA. Very good season so far, almost a strikeout in inning. 3 to 1 strikeout walk ratio. A little mid 90s fastball, hard slider, and change up from a low three quarter. Kind of a sling type delivery. Blanco goes, he's going to steal it easily. He's eighth. Not wasting any time. Wouldn't make it 0 and 1 out of Pence. Well, he had a good jump. Well, he really did. Kind of a wide throw, too, because Revere knew he had to hurry. Breaking ball to Pence to even the count at one ball and one strike. Buster Posey's on deck. Two and one. With the stolen base by Blanco, it does change the way that Thayer will go after Hunter Pence with an open base. And I know you've got four hits on the day in the on deck circle with Buster Posey, but still, Thayer does not have to give in. He's got a place to put him. Two and two. Nice location with the two one fastball there. Medica moves over, but it's going to be out of play. So it remains two and two to the Giants right fielder Hunter Pence. If you're thinking about the top of the ninth, and you should be, it'll be Rivera to lead things off, but. But Black has a number of options coming off the bench should he choose to do that. Ten strikes out. We're going to stay here. As we watch Tim Lincecum. Get ready. And come out and take them on for the ninth. He's pitched eight innings. One walk. 
five strikeouts. And he's been getting ovations since he's come off the field every inning after the six, and now another standing O as he takes them out here in the ninth. Last year against the Padres in San Diego. And that was the final out to Gregor Blanco. You saw the number of pitches in the background. 148. It's going to be Denorfia who is going to pinch hit. And Denorfia lifetime against Lincecum is one for six. And the big stat right there. 97 pitches. Plenty of gas left in the gas tank. One walk today. The only blemish on the report card. And the only time that Linscombe was in the stretch, and that was with one out back of the second inning. Grabbing a bat and in the on deck circle. Is Yasmani Grandol. So the first two hitters here in the ninth will be pinch hitters. Denarfia historically whether it's against Lincecum or anybody wearing a Giants uniform has been a tough out. Down low one ball and no strikes. They have mixed that first pitch very well all day. Fastball the curveball the slider the split has made no difference. They've used them all. Two and oh to. Denarfia, right of the umpires here thought that was a strike. It was not. And I think Adam Hamari, the plate umpire, has done an excellent job today, taking some heat for that last pitch, but I believe it was called correctly. And a strike. Two balls and one strike. To get it in fastball with a two seam grip on the outside corner. Denarfia in the take mode. He'll take no more. Last pitch number 100. Three and two. Beautiful breaking ball. Big late snap, perfect location. And he evens the count. And Linscombe looks as relaxed with his release as if he's been stolen aside between starts. Denarfia. One down in the ninth. And here's Grandall. Grandall has faced Lincecum three times. In his career, he's one for three. The one hit a home run. First pitch high, one ball and no strike. And again, a close pitch. And again, the, the crowd squirms. Back more off speed, nails the outside location, and that evens the count. He has had the ability to throw every one of his four pitches all day long whenever he's wanted. And a high fastball, two balls in one strike. William Venables on deck. And Dahl was in the driver's seat there 2 1. He was looking soft. And Lincecum got him to go out of the strike zone. Chasing that breaking ball down below. On the ground, foul. 
will reset and do it again. It remains two and two. But supposedly playing a bit off the line. Everybody in the outfield shading Grandall to pull. Sandoval way off the line at third. Two balls, two strikes. All standing. The pitch. Three and two. So Lincecum rubs up the baseball. As he will look into Hector Sanchez. And the 3 2 pitch. On the ground, Lincecum's got it. Two down in the ninth. And here's Will Venable. We will see Lincecum three times today. The only Padre hitter to see him three times. He struck out, popped out, and he's bounced out. And the first pitch to Venable. Swinging a bouncer off his foot foul, and it's 0 and 1. Perfect location, working the outside knees. And he's been able to do that with everything. The 0 1 is wide, one ball and one strike. Sanchez asking for that pitch to be, if anything, in the dirt. It's a ball and a strike. One and two. That was a good swing by Venable. But it was set up. You saw the first two pitches start to get bad. They were both off speed away. The call was for a fastball in, and it got a little leaky out over the plate. Venable missed it. And now Linscombe's in the driver's seat, one and two. He looks into Hector Sanchez. On the ground to Panic. Panic to Posey. And Linscombe has done it again. He has no hit the San Diego Padres for the second time in two years. performance by that kid. The only base runner, a walk to Chase Headley in the second inning. time it's Hector Sanchez who does the honors and the buster hug comes from first base how about that he might have four or five more innings in off I'll tell you what what a thrill for Liskum and Hector Sanchez. The last no hitter was caught by Buster Posey, and today was Hector Sanchez's turn, and these two guys really hooked up. And Liskum, from the very first inning, showed that he had command of all four pitches. He maintained it through all nine innings. And let's look at the final pitch a breaking ball, middle in, and a one two count. And Joe Panic just called up several days ago, makes the play, and there's the hug. From Hector Sanchez, and let the party begin. Well, Lincecum hasn't really had a chance to make his way away from the mound. And the closer he gets to making his way to the dugout, you're going to hear this crowd go crazy.
He can't squeeze too hard. He's not a big guy. <laughs> no. But it's genuine. One of the more popular Giants who's ever come through Mike Murphy's clubhouse. All right, let's go to Amy J. All right, guys. Tim, you never cease to amaze. You just recorded your second career no-header against the Padres both times. What emotions can you share with us that are happening right now for you? Um... about ruining an interview that'll do it but in a lot of ways it's what the crowd wants to see it's what the players obviously want to do and it's not exactly what Amy G wants but hopefully he is going to come back out because I would like to hear him talk Amy I thought that was a great question they got him good they really did get him good uh, we talk about the popularity of Tim Linscombe and uh, with all that he's accomplished in this game, if you get around him in the clubhouse environment, you just you would think he's like one of the clubhouse kids. There's just not a pretentious bone in his body, and uh, very popular amongst his teammates because of how he conducts himself as a pro and as a teammate. He's just a good guy, and here he's getting absolute blown up by Kane and Javier Lopez. Look out, Amy. Yeah. Well, if anybody's going to get away with it, it's Matt Kane. But I want to go back to what we say a lot about Tim Lincecum, and I think it's very fair. You can a lot of times tell what's going to be like for him in that first inning. He went to three and one to to Will Venable, and he ended up retiring Venable. He threw a terrific. I think it was a three-two split. And uh, and that's how this game started, and he was on a roll after that. It really was. I mean, it, it just—I can't remember a better time when he had all four pitches working. And uh, usually it'll be one of the three specialty pitches in the fastball, and the fastball is kind of iffy as to how he's going to control it, and he just sort of makes it work. Uh, but today had a great feel for everything, and he never was in a hurry. I mean, he was really in a nice rhythm. And I think throwing opposite Ian Kennedy, who pitched beautifully today, I think the two fed off each other's rhythm, and it was a very quick-paced ball game. Uh, the times that there were long innings, Linscombe did not have to sit on the bench. He had a chance to get in at bat. He had a chance to get on base, and that kept the juices flowing. But still, you need to have a calm, and you need to have a constant. And for Tim Linscombe, it was his catcher, Hector Sanchez, who just did a beautiful job of, of calling pitches, of framing pitches, of keeping the rhythm going. And uh, great support from his defense. Didn't hurt to have a couple runs either. I mean, everything just sort of lined up today. Yeah. And Linscombe has never been better. I've got two line drives written in my scorecard. Amarista in the fifth. And Seth Smith with a line drive to center field in the seventh. Final score. Tim Linscombe throws a no-hitter. It's the Giants four in the Padres nothing. East Year and Giants post game live with interviews and the wrap is coming up. But first. Let's go to the Sports Central Studio right now.